The idea is that very distantly related minds, so from very different species, have had to share the same kinds of problem solving. And in having those challenges, they've come up with similar ways of doing it. So Irina Mikhailovich and Russell Powell organized a conference where um, all of the people who are in the special issue came and gave talks. And then they wrote papers based on their talks to put in the special issue. So really, the bringing together of all of these people is due to Irina and Russell. And the idea behind it is that they're bringing together different disciplines, so the arts and the sciences and philosophy. And they're bringing together different taxonomic groups, from insects to plants to mammals to birds, to see how the different disciplines can contribute to each other's knowledge and advance our ideas on convergent minds, which is a notoriously difficult topic. Yes, cognition can be defined. A general definition espoused by researchers such as Sarah Shettleworth would be to say that it's about information processing. The problem with such a definition, however, is that a number of animals and machines might process information without having to think about it. And you wouldn't want to talk about those kinds of information processing necessarily as being part of cognition or requiring a mind. A washing machine, for example, can process information in the sense that you can set it to a particular cycle and you can put it on a particular timer and that will influence the way in which the machine behaves. But you wouldn't want to say that the washing machine was thinking. So perhaps a tighter definition is to say it's that kind of information processing that requires flexibility. And by flexibility we mean that you can take the information and apply it in new contexts in new ways. It's what you might think of if you were talking about it to a child as a transferable skill. What is important information for a goldfish might be very different from what is important to a bat or an elephant because different senses and different environments will come to influence how they process information and whether and to what extent they can use the information flexibly. So what you're interested in, patterns of similarity embedded within patterns of differences. And perhaps a useful analogy here is to think about computers. If you wanted to study how a computer worked, you wouldn't want to restrict yourself just to a PC or just to a Mac. You'd want to compare both of them and look at how, despite their different operating systems, the extent to which they solve problems in similar or different ways. Well, the same goes here, not for types of computer, but for types of minds. In my collaborations that I that I was engaged in to contribute to this this issue with Irina and Russell, they are philosophers of science and I'm a biologist. And their different skill set and their different set of training and how they think about the world, logic and how they make arguments, really was able to contribute to my training in biology in the way that made me realize that they can solve some problems that we are not able to. And so the coming together made this research possible, whereas if we each pursued our own lines, it wouldn't have been possible. So this convergence, I think, is a, a really key idea for how to advance the field. There's another way in which we use the notion of convergence in, across disciplines. And that was um, really, I suppose, thinking about it as being Renaissance revisited, that it's time to actually be able to combine science with the arts and looking at how artists and scientists can further one another's understanding of the field by sharing their different expertise and looking at the improbable connections and surprising parallels between them. So I worked together with my tango partner, artist in residence, um, Clive Wilkins, so artist in residence in the psychology department at Cambridge, and we used our joint um, expertise in tango 
and his skills as an artist and a writer, and my skills as psychologist and ornithologist, to explore how memory, mental time travel and perception worked. So that was another way of converging minds, if you like, at the level of the researchers as opposed to the subjects they study.